At last, I do want to leave you with some tips and tricks on how to go without eating for three days. First thought, it does sound berserk, I know, but um, you've made it so far, so something is telling me that you're curious and uh, maybe even inspired to take the next step and do a juice fast. Um, I applaud you if that's the case. I know it's not easy, um, but it's well worth it, I promise you that. And to make it a little easier for you, I want to share these tricks that I found super helpful when trying to overcome feelings of hunger, um, resisting the temptation to eat and control your mind so that your emotions don't take you and everyone around you for a wild roller coaster ride, aka so you don't kill anyone while you're doing a juice fast. Number one, drink lots of lemon water. This is really easy to do and really worth doing. First of all, lemon water acts as a liver cleanser and it assists the process of detoxification, which is great because it's another way to supercharge your cleanse. It also suppresses uh, hunger cravings. Not sure if you've noticed this, but it definitely does. Because lemon contains pectin, which is a soluble fiber commonly known in uh, citrus fruits. Pectin helps fight hunger as the fiber creates a feeling of fullness. And third reason I want to give you is that lemon will boost your mood. The high levels of potassium found in lemons can help brain and nerve functioning and control blood pressure as well. Lemon water is said to ward off stress and depression, which have been linked to low levels of potassium. So all good reasons to just drink a lot of lemon water. Number two. Drink lots of coconut water. I traveled to Costa Rica in 2012 to cleanse my body of the toxins that had accumulated over the years before going down the conventional route and getting chemotherapy. While I was there, I was surrounded by brilliant physicians and natural healers who helped me realize the healing powers in nature. Palm trees are fairly abundant in the rainforest and as a result were coconuts. Coconut water, I was taught at the time, is one of the most biocompatible substances to the human body and our hydration needs. In fact, it is so compatible that it has been reported to have been used for intravenous hydration and revival of critically ill patients in remote regions of the world. While in Costa Rica, I would do five-day pipa fast, where all I consumed was fresh coconut waters. Every day, I would drink an average of 20 coconuts a day. I got really good with a machete, needless to say. Like many others, I do consider natural water, coconut water, to be insanely beneficial for our bodies. While juice fasting, you should use it to re-energize yourself. It also helps suppress feelings of hunger, as it's quite filling, I find. Pay attention to the ingredient list, though. For some idiotic reason, a few brands list additives such as sugar and vitamin C in the ingredient list, which is so unnecessary because it's such a natural, beautiful product. Stay away from those and look for the brands that just list natural coconut water as the only ingredient. Number three, drink yerba mate. I love yerba mate for so many reasons. I do want to give you a little bit of history background though before I get into the, its benefits. So it's been used as a beverage since the time of the ancient Indians of Brazil and Paraguay. In the early 16th century, a Spanish explorer by the name that I cannot pronounce found that the Indians of Paraguay brewed a leaf tea that produced exhilaration and relief from fatigue. In Europe, it has been widely used for weight loss, physical and mental fatigue, nervous depression, rheumatic pains and headaches. Now, as a little side note, some yerba makers claim that their herb does not contain any caffeine, rather a chemical similar to caffeine called matine. But the fact remains that yerba mate does contain caffeine, just like most other teas, which is why you should drink it responsibly. When you make a cup, you should make it with water that's just under boiling, because when you do boil the water, the tea does tend to be a little bitter and not as enjoyable. What I also found was mixing it with coconut water is quite the energy boost and does compete with Red Bull. In fact, I'd say that it's healthier and a lot more effective than Red Bull. So drink up. Number four, 
have a little honey. As I mentioned before, your blood sugar drops since you're not consuming much sugar or sugar-inducing foods. But as a result, this may also lead to fatigue and mental fog. You may find it difficult to concentrate on tasks, which is not a very motivating feeling. What I found to be very effective is a teaspoon of honey every day. Especially if you time it perfectly just before you get too low energy. For a lot of people, the time is around 3 p.m., but of course everyone's different. I personally prefer Manuka honey for its additional medicinal properties. However, it is super expensive and I believe in the healing properties of bee honey as well. So whatever fits the bill and preference, but just a little tip, honey is a great way to spike up your blood sugar and give you a little boost of energy when you really need it. Number five, drink kombucha. So you may have heard of kombucha since there's been a little spike in popularity, at least in Canada, but it is still fairly unknown to most Westerners. The ancient Chinese, however, have been calling it the immortal health elixir for decades. In fact, it's been around for almost 2,000 years and has a rich history of health benefits like preventing and fighting cancer, arthritis, and other degenerative diseases. Besides having a whole myriad of health benefits, a cup of kombucha also leaves your stomach super satisfied, I found. I have a few bottles in my fridge for whenever the hunger kicks in. Not to mention, it kind of tastes like champagne. So just don't mind the little floaties in the drink. Think of them as your little friends, because they're the catalyst of the health benefits that you enjoy by drinking kombucha. And finally... Having the right attitude, needless to say, is the key in sticking to a juice fast. You need to want to do it. And that comes down to motivation and understanding the benefits of juice fasting. Personally, I felt that reading and listening to other people talk about their experiences and their love for juice fasting to be super persuasive. Keeping the end goals and benefits in mind is also effective. In the end, most of us are goal-orientated individuals and like to work towards specific outcomes. Find the reason that resonates with you and focus your attention on those. Then just go for it. Do one big grocery shop to fill your fridge with colorful, fresh produce so you really have no excuse to not juice. Identify any other potential excuses you may come up with before you start the fast so you can recognize them immediately as they pop into your head. Resist the urge to quit. You will feel so much worse if you start the fast and then quit. Not so much physically, I would imagine, but more so emotionally. Finishing the fast, on the other hand, will make you feel so accomplished, releasing a whole bunch of happy chemicals you will have all the reason to celebrate. Try to take it easy on the alcohol though for a couple of days as your liver's just been through a lot cleansing your body. And besides that, who really needs alcohol when you'll be high on life because you've just accomplished a really, really great thing. And that concludes my ultimate guide to juice fasting. I hope this information will inspire you to juice fast once in a while as a way to reclaim or simply maintain your health. I salute each and one of you who garners the willpower, strength, and determination to overcome short-term hardship for long-term health benefits. It's not easy, but it's so well worth the effort. If you have any questions or tips and tricks that have perhaps helped you during juice fasting, I'd love to hear from you. Until then, juice real good.